Hi, my name is Blair Wagner, and today I'm here with Clubhouse Media in support of United Way and their Women Who Rule campaign and video series. Today I'm sitting with Stephanie Jones Heath. We're going to be chatting today about what she does. She is the Chief Executive Director of the Diversity Health Center, and she also serves on the advisory board for the Liberty County United Way office. The Diversity Health Center is great because the work that they do centers around making healthcare accessible with a particular focus on the uninsured and underinsured residents. Hi, Stephanie. How Hi. are you? Thank you, Blair, for <laughs> having me. So first off, uh, just for people to get to know you a little bit, um, can you tell us a little bit about what you do as the chief executive director of the Diversity Health Center? Um, really, my role at Diversity Health Center is to for the overall operations of the health center. And um, we cover three counties. We cover Liberty, Long, and Wayne County. And we provide health care for people that are uninsured and underinsured, as you stated earlier. And what I do is I try to create services that are missing in the community around health care. So we have um, primary care, we have dental care, we have a retail pharmacy, behavioral health services. And I try to create an environment that um, health care is accessible to everyone, regardless of your ability to pay. So I work really hard with my partners in the community like United Way and um, the Manor House and different organizations like that in order to connect people, not just to health care, but also to services that the United Way offer in places like the Manor House that offer food and um, um, food assistance to people who need food assistance. Great. Um, so this career in healthcare, how did you enter it? Where did you start? Do you want to take us back a little bit? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I started this. It was purely by accident. Mm -hmm. I can't say that I woke mm -hmm. up dreaming about being in healthcare, but my husband was in the military, and I also served in the military, the Army, for three years. And when we get out, like most military families, we travel to different places and and I was looking for a job and I ended up getting a job at the local clinic as a receptionist. So I truly worked my way through the ranks. Wow. I worked in that, um, the military side of the house for 15 years in different various jobs throughout the um, hospital in the medical sector with the military. And then I moved to Tampa, Florida where we were gonna retire. And um, I applied for a job and got a job on the uh, what we call the civilian side uh, when it comes to military. And I worked in this community health center that was servicing people that didn't have access to care. So to go from being in a community where everybody had access to care, the military community, it was very structured, very organized to a community where you dealt with people that were homeless, people that had never been to the doctor, I immediately fell in love with it. It reminded me of my roots. I grew up in Mississippi. We didn't have a lot. We had a lot of love, we had yeah. a lot of family. So I was used to being around family and used to working in an environment where people didn't have access to health, living in an environment where people didn't have access to health care. But to actually work in that environment, I immediately fell in love with it. And I ate, drank, slept health care. <laughs> and then I started writing grants. Mm -hmm. And I realized, quickly realized grants was an opportunity for me to create services when within the community. And I got promoted and I had a great mentor at the time that took me under his wings and he trained me and he really exposed me to the business side of healthcare. And I realized without the business side, you still, you didn't have the access piece. So I gravitated toward that and I got my bachelor's degree. I was one of those people. I took the slow, long route. Mm -hmm. um, didn't follow what mama said when I first graduated from high school. <laughs> I was actually an engineer major oh, wow. um, when I first got out of mm -hmm. high school and I loved drawing and doing things like that. And so I went back and got my degree in healthcare. And then I had the beautiful opportunity of being sponsored for my master's degree, which I did at USF in Florida. And I got my master's degree and someone saw the potential in me to lead. And I got promoted to um, operations officer. And like I said, it became the breath that I breathe every day. <laughs> Healthcare is mm -hmm. something I truly, yeah. truly love because I like seeing the impact mm -hmm. that you have on a person's life. And I like seeing where people can say to you, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for, uh, for bringing behavioral health services to our community. And so I took a leap of faith and I relocated. My kids were grown. I have two beautiful girls and I relocated here to Florida 
and I went to Georgia um, and I started all over. I went through a divorce um, after 22 years and I was on my own. And so I started over and I moved to Georgia by myself and I took the CEO position. So this was my first big opportunity to say, you know, when you're in the background and you say, I can do that, I can do that. <laughs> and, um, and so I took this position five years ago and I walked into a place where um, we had a center, but the center was on, on life support at the time. Yeah. And, um, and I said, what have I done? I've quit my job <laughs> and relocated to Georgia to something that's dying. Yeah. But really it wasn't dying, it just needed a breath of life. So I took it as my personal baby and I spent many nights at the clinic, clinic when I first moved here. I actually had a recliner sofa that I slept in for about a week um, trying to get the center back in shape because we were about to lose funding and, and losing funding meant losing healthcare in that community. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I can't, I, I have to make this work. And so we had a staff of about 17 people at the time. And, um, and, and I worked and worked and worked and through the grace of God and through mm -hmm. a lot of support from um, people, it, we made it work. I called on all the favors that I had in Florida to support me when I first got here because I knew no one. And, and, and that's the beautiful thing about Community Health Center. It's not a competitive process. It's about support in trying to bring services to a community. So you can always call back or reach back on people and say, hey, can you help me do this, help me do that? And they completely supported me when I got here. And so now the center, we just built a brand new building two years ago. And um, we have mobile dental services, mobile um, healthcare services, and we have four, four locations now. And so we cover three different counties. Yeah. So my, my love and my passion is truly about creating services and, and helping a community to, to grow ultimately. That was so beautiful. Oh <laughs> uh, no, that's great. So as you can see, like from the background that you've given us, you have such a multifaceted background and we can see how it translates now. Cause not only are you the chief executive director of diversity health center, like I mentioned earlier, you also um, serve on the advisory board. Yes. Can you give us some insight on how you bring these two worlds together? Cause the United way and the diversity health center do work a lot together on yes. um, cases, what some of the events you do and how you bring these two um, sides well, together. Really how I bring that together. When I was in Florida, I worked really close with the United way in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, so when I moved to Georgia, the first thing I said is where's the United way? Yeah. <laughs> because I knew okay. how they were such great partners with me when I was in Florida. So, oh, and I love their mission. Yeah. I love their vision. Mm -hmm. And so the first person I looked for when I got in town was the United way. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer Darcy at the time was leading the United way over in, um, Liberty County. So I immediately mm -hmm. called her up and, and I said, Hey, Jennifer, you know, and I introduced myself and, and I started explaining to her the vision that I had for the center and we immediately connected. And, um, and that's the, one of the things that we do at a community health center, we connect to services. Cause when patients come into the center, most of the time they come in a patient, good example, come in for a headache. And when you really get behind why they have a headache, a lot of times they haven't eaten, they're homeless, they don't have access to any health care. And so you have to kind of peel back the layers to kind of find out where that headache come from. And so, and that's where United Way comes in because United Way has access to all of those ancillary services that we don't have. Like we have the healthcare portion of it, but of course we don't do food banks. We don't do um, housing assistance and different things like that. So I knew if I connected with United Way, then I could use a holistic approach to treating the patients when they come into the centers. Because it's one thing to say, okay, you have a headache, here's a prescription for Tylenol, for example. That headache's not gonna go away if you don't have food to eat. Yeah. So in having that approach of working with the other people in the community to connect with those services, I can easily say, hey, Jennifer, I got this person over here. They're homeless and they need something to eat. And then I can connect them with Jennifer to make sure we address the food and the housing issue. Then by default, we fix the actual medical condition. So that's how the connection, and we work with everybody in the community down through public housing, like I said, places like the Manor House, because they have a 
hot food bank. So you get to know everybody in the community that provide those additional services that we can wrap around those patients when they come into the center. Perfect. Um, there's a word you just mentioned that I find very interesting, holistic. Yeah, holistic. Yeah, do you mind like elaborating on that word and like what it means to you and why it's so important that you implement it in this way in healthcare? Well, for me, and this is my personal opinion, and a lot of times I tell people it's my personal opinion because, mm -hmm. you know, when you work in different sectors, when you talk about mind, body, and spirit, people get afraid when you say the yeah. spirit piece mm -hmm. of things. But I'm very open about my emotions and how I connect to things because yeah. I really feel in my life, I've gone through a lot of different things. I Early on in my life, I was in a plane crash mm -hmm. and I walked away and, and I'm still here. So, mm -hmm. so for me, everything is spiritually connected in some way. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to me, when it comes to healthcare and when it comes to um, people who have illnesses, you have to address every piece of that. You have to address the physical part of your body, which sometimes medicine can fit. And then you have to address the mental part of your body, which a lot of people, when you have, like when I went through my plane crash, I had that plane crash and I blocked it from my memory for, for about five years. Five years I walked around on this earth and didn't know I had been in a plane crash until my body physically started breaking down from it because I had blocked those memories. Mm -hmm. So I knew from a mental standpoint, I had to deal with that. I had to talk about it. I had to address the fact that that that's what was going on in my life in order to prevent me from healing physically. So that's why for me, everything I do is addressed around the mind, body, and the spirit. And the spiritual thing, a lot of people get stuck on God or debating who's that spiritual. Spirituality to me is what whatever you believe in. If you believe in that tree that stands up <laughs> outside and you spiritually connect to that, believe in it. But it gives you something to believe in that's bigger than just the physical aspects of life. So for me, that's why I say it's the holistic approach mm -hmm. because it's the mind, the body, and the spirit. And when you can connect all of that, then from that standpoint of being a whole person, then you can be a, truly a whole person and live life. To me, I live life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't take any day for granted because every day to me is my last day. And so for everything and every connection that I make with people, it's like, it's a reason for this. Like it's a reason for us sitting here talking right now. And I believe that And our lives are gonna be enriched from that in some type of way. Okay. Um, so going back to your role um, with Diversity Health Center, how do you handle being um, like a woman in this leadership position? Wow, that's yeah. a big word because see, I, I truly, um, from the standpoint of being a woman, it has definitely been challenging uh, a lot of times because for me, I was groomed and my mentor was a male. Mm -hmm. And from the standpoint of, of you know everything that's going on in, in the world right now, he was an old, big, if you, he, he, he was a white guy that mentored me. So he exposed me to a world that I wouldn't have never gotten exposed to um, as a woman, and especially as a woman of color. Mm -hmm. And so going through that relationship with him, and a lot of people are afraid to have those open conversations. He was always very open to me. And he always said, Stephanie, you got two things against you, working against you right now. You're black and you're a woman. And so at first I was like, what did he just say to me? <laughs> and then I realized I didn't take offense to it. I really listened to what he said to me. And he said, and those are two things you can't change about yourself. You can't change the fact that you're a woman and you can't change the fact that you're black. And I said, yeah, that's true. And then he said, but it's a way to make that work for you. And so in a lot of ways through my life and through the challenges that I've had, I remember the things that he said to me and some of the things that he taught me that I wouldn't have never known, like, you know, uh, like he said, always stress the part that you want to be, not the place that you're in. And he told me that very frankly. He said, you know, wear clothes or be where you want to go. Now, how many people will tell you that and how many people will take that time to just truly give you that information? So some of the challenges that I had, if I had not met him, I wouldn't have known how to deal with it. Because mm -hmm. at first I would have probably said, who are you to tell me how to dress? Who are you to tell me how to speak, how to be? But then I realized coming from that place with him, 
that was really his way of mentoring me to teach me that as a woman, you're going to face different challenges because I face them every day. When I hire males to work for me, it's hard for them to receive certain things from me. Like if I put certain demands or certain rules in place, they'll look at me, first of all, because I'm younger. Secondly, mm -hmm. because I'm a female. And thirdly, I'm getting the title as the angry black woman a lot of times. And I'm like, you know, I don't come from a place of anger. I come from a place of requirements. I put requirements on people when they're in a job. And so I've had to deal with that through the years, but I always go back to that place where my mentor taught me. He said, Stephanie, receive anything anybody gives to you, take the parts you want and leave the rest. And so I don't take things personal in business. So even when people come to me and they try to treat me a certain way, I usually, I will confront that and we can talk about it. Let's talk about it. And so that's the way I've always handled any situation I've been in. And I've learned that when it comes to challenges in your life, it's really about how you respond to a situation versus how you, how you, whoever that person is that's giving you that information. Absolutely. And um, I can heavily relate to so much of that. Like, I wish I could just, yeah. I mean, because I heard the speech as well yes. growing up. I was told that when I was, I want to say, like seven or eight years old. Um, I was told by someone who was mentoring me, the you're black, you're a woman. You have uh -huh. to work twice as hard. Exactly. And um, taking those things with you, being a black woman in this leadership position, um, what is an impact that you hope to make to help other women coming through this field? Well, what I really try to do is I try to make an impact on any anyone and everyone. I like to okay. share. I'm not afraid of, you know, a lot of times people, you know, feel afraid and feel kind of territorial. And that's where the spiritual piece come in. Mm -hmm. Because for me, if I'm not good enough, then maybe somebody else needs to be sitting in this seat. God has something better for me. And so I've always taken that approach. And whenever I have about five mentees, that I mentor now because one of the powers that you have and the responsibilities that you have is to mentor others. And I mentor uh, five other females, and um, but they're black, white, you know, different. Mm -hmm. They're not just all black females because I make a point of, you know, somebody mentored me and they weren't black. So I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not limiting what I do and the, and the people that I help as to say I only help black people. No, because part of your responsibility is to mentor others. So I have five mentees and all the things that I learned from my mentor, I try to share with my mentees. I try to expose them to different situations that they might not necessarily have been exposed to because I'm from Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And the aspirations for my mother with her six kids, which is six of us, was for all of us to graduate from high school. So, yeah. so when all six of us had graduated from high school, my mom was like, I've done my job. But, you know, now you can't make it with just a high school education. But during her generation, that's what was important for her because most kids didn't graduate from high school. So I try to teach people about the importance of education. Because you can know, you can be the most knowledgeable person, but if you don't have the credentials to put the check mark in the box, then sometimes you don't even get in front of the people that you need to get in front of. And then don't take life for granted. And so I try to share all of my life experiences, all the things that I've gone through and, and seen in my life, I try to share with other people. And I think that's the responsibility for anybody, whether you're in leadership or whether you're you're doing the interview right now, you know, share this experience with somebody else and don't be afraid of sharing because that's, I think a lot of people are afraid of sharing because they think that person's going to take their position or, or maybe, I don't know, make, make their light shine brighter than theirs. But then if you are part of that journey, then that from the inside, you know, I feel like, wow, okay, I, I, I help do a little bit to make somebody else's life better. Absolutely. And um, what are just some lasting like words of advice you would give to maybe a young woman trying to enter this field or even people now in general that are trying to enter the healthcare field? Well, what I would what I would say, first of all, is no never means no. It's just find, find a different way to get that. Yes, because I had a, not, a lot of no's in my life. I interviewed for a lot of different positions. And even now being in the position that I'm in, I don't get stuck on a title. I mean, the title is just the ability to 
to allow me to do the things that I wanted to do when maybe I was the front desk clerk, you know? So don't get caught up on titles. I mean, have goals for yourself and always be a dream a bigger dream. Cause my dream for myself was my initial dream was to make my mother proud um, by getting my bachelor's degree because nobody in my family had a college degree. And so for me, that was it. So when I became an office manager, we had a party at my house. I felt like I had arrived. So it was like, oh my God, I'm an office manager. I called my mom and we were all celebrating because I had my bachelor's degree and I, and I was an office manager. And then I started thinking, oh man, I got to dream bigger. You know, what can I do next? And then when I became chief operation officer, I really said, I've arrived, I'm the chief yeah. operation officer. <laughs> then I realized, I said, okay, Stephanie, it's not about titles. And my mother said it before she passed away. My mother um, passed away a couple of years ago with, from heart, heart disease. Mm -hmm. And I always, I told my mom before she died, I said to her, I said, mom, I said, I made it. I did it. And my mom said, I, for, for me, you being here is, you did it. So Stephanie, don't, don't get caught up on titles in life. Get caught up in the work that you do. And that's why I love the work that I do. And I'm so passionate about it because I know she's smiling from heaven saying, I'm proud of you. And I think that's what every person wants is somebody to be proud of them. And um, so that's, that would be my lasting words. Don't get caught up on titles. You know, think about the work you do and the impact that you have in your community. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Those Thank are you. very wise, important words. Yes. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and talk with us, talk with me, and I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you so much. Of I enjoyed it. Thank mm -hmm. you.